So you've ran your sample, but something doesn't seem right. So you run it again, and now you've gotten a completely different result. So what the heck is going on? Don't worry, I'll explain everything, so stick around. Hey guys, what's up? My name's Andrew Kotlar, and there's countless cases where operations begin to yield fluctuating results. If you're faced with inconsistent results, what actions can you take to get your operation back on track? Well, as a leading test sieve manufacturer, WS Tyler is here to help you effectively carry out your particle analysis testing and produce accurate results consistently. So, in this video, we'll analyze the conditions that may adversely affect the repeatability of your sieve results, as well as some useful tips to improve your process. Before I can address some of the tips and tricks to avoid a consistent results, we need to review why you may encounter them in the first place. So here's six main reasons for not getting repeatable results when conducting a test sieve analysis. Material with a high aspect ratio, like rice, or material with a flat, uh, irregular surface, like cereal, are tough to sieve and obtain repeatable results. This is why it's important to employ the correct equipment to carry out the process. If irregular particle shapes are causing issues for your operation, a dynamic image analysis system may be a good solution. There's a finite number of openings in the woven wire mesh of a sieve. In order to achieve accurate and repeatable sieve results, each particle on the sieve must have an opportunity to pass through an opening. By overloading the sieve, you decrease the opportunity for the particles to find an opening to pass through and, in turn, this begins to reduce the effectiveness of the ROTAP. This directly relates to overloading your test sieves. The diameter you choose should be based on the amount of material you intend to run. This is because the greater the sieve diameter, the more available openings you have. Reducing the number of available openings increases the chances of blocking the openings, which will skew your results. If the wire cloth in your sieve frame becomes loose, the agitating action of the ROTAP is compromised. So in order for the sieve to function properly, the wire cloth should be drum tight. If a sieve in your stack has a loose or detached wire cloth, the sieve should be replaced. Your results will only be as good as your representative sample. So it's imperative that you use best practices when gathering and handling your sample. This includes using either coning and quartering method of sample division or using a splitter to create even sample portions. The amount of time you take to conduct your test sieve analysis is perhaps the most important of all. Remember, you can't run your test too long, but you can run it for way too short of a time. To look back at the shape of the material you're working with, the more your material deviates from being round, the more time you need to add to the row tab. So now that you have a general understanding of the many factors that can cause inconsistent results, you're probably curious as to what you can do to achieve the most accurate and repeatable results. The number one thing for getting good sieve results is taking a good representative sample of the material you're going to sieve. So be sure to evenly divide and accurately weigh each sample. If you drop or lose any material in between testing, you should gather enough material to make up for what was lost. You'll also want to make sure you choose a sieve size that'll best fit the sample size you're running. Selecting a sieve size that's too large will result in unwanted particles making their way through the mesh openings. On the other hand, selecting a sieve size that's too small may prevent desired particles from passing through, causing them to accumulate in the openings and hinder the result of the test. Lastly, you'll want to determine the end point of sieving for the material that you're testing. To determine the end point of sieving, perform the following. Put the sieve stack together for the material you're running. Put the material to be run on the top sieve of the stack. Place the sieve stack in your sieve shaker and run the material for three minutes. Remove the sieve stack from the shaker and weigh each sieve individually without removing the material. Record the weight of each sieve. Put the sieve stack back on the sieve shaker and run the material for an additional minute. Remove the sieve stack and weigh each sieve individually and record the weight. If 0.1 gram or more material pass through one sieve to another, repeat the last steps until there's less than 0.1 gram of material passing between the sieves. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, fill out a contact us form so we can answer your specific questions. Just click the link in the description. And if you'd like to learn more about Woven Wire Mesh or our many products, we have a learning center filled with written and video content to make you an expert. Just click that second link and you'll be that expert in no time. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and ring that bell to keep up with all things WS Tyler. Once again, my name's Andrew Kotlar and I'll see you around in the next video. Bye for now.